Hi, this is Mato. Welcome to my online chess lecture. In this video, I will show you a game between Victor Waltrach and Akiva Rubenstein. This very beautiful chess game was played in London in 1922. Victor Waltrach had white pieces and he started with d4. Rubenstein played knight to f6, knight to f3, e6, and now bishop to g5, the Trompovsky attack. Black to move. How would you continue? Perhaps some people would play bishop to e7. Rubenstein played c5, and the modern theory considers this move to be the best. In modern times, Anand, Karpov, and Kramnik, just to name a few, play this move too. The game continued. Bishop takes knight. Let's take it back. If e3, then black can play queen to b6, attacking the pawn on b2. Back to our game. Bishop takes a knight. Queen takes bishop and now e3. Knight to c6, c3. Bishop to e7. Bishop to d3. d5. Knight from b to d2. Rubenstein castled kingside. Why to move? Waltach can also castle a kingside. But he wanted to have a more exciting game. So he played queen to e2, intending to castle queenside. e5. d takes on e5. Knight takes on e5. Knight takes knight. Queen takes knight. And Waltach castled queenside. Black to move. How would you continue? Perhaps developing the light squared bishop is not a bad move. Do you agree? Rubenstein played b5. What is this? Is this a blunder? Or maybe a trap? Why to move? To take the pawn or not? Would you? Waltach played knight to f3, attacking the queen. Queen to c7. And the pawn is still free for grabbing. If not, then black would play c4. And then b4, maybe. Bishop takes on b5. Rook to b8. Why to move? This is now critical. Bishop to d3 was played. Let's take it back. If rook takes on d5, then bishop to e6. And Waltach didn't like this move, rook from d to d1, because of bishop takes on a2. But let's take it back. Well, he didn't consider playing bishop to c4, which would be very interesting continuation for white. But he didn't like to lose the exchange. Back to our game. Bishop to d3, queen to a5. Bishop to b1, and this was the idea, defending the pawn on a2. Bishop to f6. Somehow and suddenly, white king is not feeling safe. Rook to d2. Bishop to a6, attacking the queen and connecting rooks. Queen to d1. Black to move. How would you continue now? How can black improve his position? Please pause and find the best move for black. Did you pause? What did you find? Did you find this awesome move by black? Bishop takes on c3. Kaboom. Waltach regretted taking the free pawn on b5. White to move. Bishop takes on h7 check. Let's take it back. This is the continuation that Waltach didn't like. Pawn takes bishop, then a queen to a3 check. If rook to b2... Queen to b2 checkmate, and what else? If king goes to c2, then queen to b2 checkmate. Back to our game. So we have bishop takes on h7 check, king to h8, white to move. Queen to c2 was played. Well, bishop to b1 would perhaps offer a bit more resistance, but black is still winning after d4. Back to our game. Queen to c2. Rook takes pawn on b2. Rook takes on d5, intending rook to h5, and then giving perpetual check, maybe. Queen takes on a2. Rook to h5, like I said, hoping for a perpetual check. 
but no luck after queen to a1 check. Queen to b1. Black played a move and white resigned and the move is rook takes on b1, while touch resigned in view of discontinuation. Bishop takes on b1, discovered check, king to g8, then everything is losing. After say rook takes on c5, queen to b2 check and after king to d1, queen takes on b1, check, mate. So much initiative for one little pawn. What do you think of this game? And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now.